a little graduation gift to get you through high school. Welcome to Miss Mojo, and today we're counting down our picks for the top 10 most unforgivable moments in rom-coms. Turn around, go back. It's a one-way street, I have to go around the block. By the time we go around the block, she'll be gone. For this list, we'll be looking at the worst offences that have been committed in the name of romance. Some plot points will be discussed, so consider this your spoiler alert. Which of these moments always leaves you shocked? Let us know in the comments below. Number 10. Everything Mike Does – The Ugly Truth Sit down folks, this one might take a while. In the late 2000s and early 2010s, Katherine Heigl was the queen of the romantic comedy, but not every project she chose was a winner. 2009's The Ugly Truth starred Heigl alongside Gerard Butler, but it sure lives up to the ugly part of its name. If you can't face it, don't call. That about wraps it up for this evening. I'm Mike Chadway reminding you that the truth is never pretty. Watching this back, everything about Butler's character Mike is completely obscene. He's a playboy, he's gross, and he has terrible views about women and dating. Oh, I know you think Colin is above it all, but trust me, he's a guy. If he's even remotely into you, he's probably thought about each one of your orifices at least ten times. I love how you assume all men are as perverse as you are. Oh, I don't assume. I know. Maybe, and that's a strong maybe, we could forgive all of this if he went through any sort of positive change, but he pretty much stays terrible the whole time, and still, somehow, gets the girl. Why? Beats the s*** out of me, but I am. Number 9. Noah's Possessiveness – The Kissing Booth Franchise the Kissing Booth franchise is not the strongest of the Netflix teen offerings, and the characterization of its male romantic lead is downright unforgivable. Wearing a skirt like that is asking for it. Oh, seriously? You want to go down that road? The film stars Joey King as Elle and Jacob Elordi as Noah, the boy she's had a crush on for years. Besides his good looks, Noah doesn't really have much going for him. From the jump, the obsessive way he acts around Elle is a huge red flag, and it doesn't get much better with time. You are the only girl who doesn't fall at my feet, and it is driving me crazy. He notably forbids other boys in school from dating her, and his first reaction to any situation is usually a violent one. We think if the kissing booth really wanted to join the ranks of the Netflix elite, a few more drafts would have helped. Nobody wants us to be together. Well, that may be true. Number 8. Annie spies on Sam and Jonah. Sleepless in Seattle. Beck. What? Is this crazy? The plot of Sleepless in Seattle is a little far-fetched if you think about it too hard. Annie and Sam, played by Meg Ryan and Tom Hanks, fall in love without meeting until the end of the film, but honestly, for the most part, the amazing chemistry between Hanks and Ryan and the excellent script is enough to make this one work. There's just one section we think goes too far. At one point during the film, Annie flies to Seattle. How did I get here? You told a lie and got on a plane. That's not what I mean. Instead of introducing herself to Sam, she proceeds to stalk him and his son throughout the city. We love you, girl, but this is not it. Hello. Hello. So then what happened? left, obviously. Number 7. Tim and Kat's Relationship – Mystic Pizza Mystic Pizza is a delightfully underrated rom-com from the late 80s. It's a fizzy coming-of-age story, starring a couple of young stars before their heyday, including Julia Roberts and Matt Damon. But there's one plot point we just can't get over. One of the adolescent characters who works at the pizza parlour, Kat, gets involved with Tim, her decidedly not teenage boss. We all wish we could stop time, don't we? Well, I'm afraid it won't work. Soon you'll be at school. <laughs> She's into him, and unfortunately, he entertains it. The two get intimate, but he ultimately stays with his wife. He just stood there, he didn't even say a word to me. This plot point acts as a good character building moment for Kat, as she learns to move on and live for herself. But we can all agree that Tim is the worst. Yeah. Well, I guess we better go. Bye, Kat.
Number six, Harry cheats on Karen. Love Actually. We all love Emma Thompson, our British acting and screenwriting queen. We'll also always love the late Alan Rickman, our British thespian king. We love any chance to get to see these two act together, so in that respect, Love Actually is a big treat. But what we don't love, actually, is watching Rickman's character treat Thompson's like dirt. Me is very pretty. Is she? You know she is, darling. Be careful there. In the movie, they play Harry and Karen, respectively. From afar, the two look like a perfectly happy couple. But as the story goes on, we learn that Harry is having an affair with his secretary. I really don't know love. I really don't know love at all. Out of all the wild stuff that happens throughout the movie, this somehow still gets us the most. I am so in the room. A classic fool. Number five, Nate's attitude. The devil wears Prada. This romantic comedy has a romance so bad, we wonder if we should really even count it in the genre. But alas, we must. The Devil Wears Prada is a nearly perfect film, featuring all-star performances from the likes of Meryl Streep, Anne Hathaway, and Emily Blunt. But one performance stands out, as being way worse than all the others, that is. Wait, you got a job at a fashion magazine? Mm -hmm. oh, what was it, a phone interview? Wow. <laughs> it sure. As Andy's boyfriend Nate, Adrian Grenier makes us want to smash our screens. The movie clearly wants us to empathise with him when Andy becomes more involved with work, but it's such a sexist narrative, it's difficult to care. You hate Runway and Miranda and you think fashion is stupid, you've made that clear. It doesn't help that Grenier brings loads of entourage baggage with him. The male toxicity is potent. That's okay, that's fine. Just own up to it. And then we can stop pretending like we have anything in common anymore. Number four, Gloria assaults Jeremy. Wedding Crashers. Wedding Crashers doesn't have a particularly politically correct setup to start, but the humour makes it easy to enjoy the ride. We could watch Owen Wilson and Vince Vaughn goof around all day, and Rachel McAdams is so charming, she makes anything work. But there's a disturbing moment where the movie simply goes too far. I'm not being adventurous enough for you. Gloria, I'm pretty sure that is not what I've been saying to you. Isla Fisher plays Gloria. She and Vince Vaughn's character Jeremy serve as the sort of B couple in the story. Jeremy. <laughs> Jeremy, you're amazing. Oh god, I think you're amazing. Oh my god, don't ever leave me. Ever. Good. Cuz I'd find you. <laughs> Fisher puts her comedy chops to good use, but in one instance, she has to sneak into Jeremy's room, tie him to his bed, and basically attack him. It's weirdly portrayed as being all in good fun, but we can't get the assault that's clearly taking place out of our heads. Try one of these scones, you're gonna love them. I'm a little too traumatized to have a scone. Let's move. Number three, inappropriate pictures. Crazy, stupid love. Crazy Stupid Love made us feel like the rom-com golden age was making a comeback. Emma Stone and Ryan Gosling have great chemistry, and the rest of the cast is a blast to watch. But one storyline left us majorly grossed out. In the film, 13-year-old Robbie has a crush on his babysitter, Jessica. Jessica Riley, you are my soulmate, the love of my life. I have marked myself with a scarlet J for you, Jessica. She rebuffs his advances throughout the film because he's, you know, 13. But for some reason, she decides to throw him a bone just as the movie closes. I thought you weren't giving up. I'm not. And I just figure you like my dad. And in a few years, I'll look like him. I'll come for you then. That's not a bad plan. For reasons we don't have time to get into, Jessica has explicit photos of herself that she then gives to Robbie. It's an extremely out of character decision and a gross thing to do considering his age. So, can you try it? Take care, Robbie. Number two, mocking Abby's looks. The truth about cats and dogs. Janine Garofalo is one of our favourite comedic actresses. She's given us many amazing movies over the years, from Reality Bites to Wet Hot American Summer. But some of you might have forgotten her 1996 romantic comedy, The Truth About Cats and Dogs. Head up, be proud, feeling good. Yes, sir. 
This makes all the difference, thank you. The film is a fresh take on Serrano de Bergerac. Garofalo plays Abby, a radio host who gets her pal Noel, played by Uma Thurman, to pretend to be her to impress a man. He likes you, you know, the way you talk, the things you say. You're the voice, I'm just the body. And what a body it is. We know that this sort of deception is par for the course for Serrano, but we could have done with less poking fun at Abby's looks. She's beautiful and charismatic, and it's annoying that the movie derides her as undesirable when she clearly isn't. I'm smart. I have a good sense of humor. I make a great living. Before we continue, be sure to subscribe to our channel and ring the bell to get notified about our latest videos. You have the option to be notified for occasional videos or all of them. If you're on your phone, make sure you go into your settings and switch on notifications. Number 1. Big leaves Carrie on their wedding day. Sex and the City. What's happening? Big's not here. 25 minutes late. We don't always agree with Carrie on Sex and the City, but this is one moment when we were definitely on her side. On the day of her and Big's wedding, the groom has a huge freakout and appallingly leaves her. I was out front. I just left. I can't do this. But that's not even the worst part. As he's driving down the road, he realizes that he's messed up and tries to catch Carrie before she leaves the church. They meet in the middle, and she does what any woman would, uses her bouquet as a weapon. I knew you would do this! I knew it! Carrie, I'm sorry. I am humiliated! We struggled to root for Big to begin with, and this move just proved that he was nowhere near mature enough for Carrie. Let's go, man! Move it! Do you agree with our picks? Check out this other recent clip from Ms. Mojo and be sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified about our latest videos.